Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's Patch Tuesday again and with that we got patches for 79 different vulnerabilities including one vulnerability that is already being exploited. Wouldn't be Patch Tuesday without at least one little zero day like that. So let's start with the one that's already being exploited, CVE 2022-37969. It's a privilege escalation vulnerability in the Windows Common Log System driver and details have already been made public according to Microsoft. So it's not only being exploited, it's already publicly known. In April, Microsoft actually patched a similar vulnerability in the common log file system driver. So there is a chance that this was more or less just an additional fix for this vulnerability, that there was a way to bypass the original patch. We have seen uh, this before, but not enough detail at this point to really confirm this. These days, I do not really get terribly excited about privilege escalation uh, zero days like this. After all, they appear to be coming sort of out on almost a weekly schedule. More interesting in some ways uh, are a couple of other vulnerabilities. CVE 2022-34718. It's a remote code execution vulnerability in the TCP IP stack and attacker is able to get from unauthenticated to full system access with one packet. But it requires, first of all, that IPsec is enabled and secondly, well, an IPv6 packet is required, so the system needs to have IPv6 enabled and be reachable via IPv6 unless you're only sort of considering local network access. With nobody openly admitting to actually using IPv6, we will probably not see a lot of exploits, uh, at least not uh, being uh, detected. There are uh, two more related vulnerabilities affecting uh, the internet uh, key exchange. So also IPsec is required for these vulnerabilities to be exploited. All these three vulnerabilities have a CVSS score of 9.8. The vulnerability is, of course, vulnerable, but I haven't really seen any details yet as to what's the nature of the packet that's required here or the actual vulnerability. And Adobe today released patches as well. The patches fix multiple vulnerabilities in experience managers, bridge, InDesign, Photoshop, InCopy, Animate, and Illustrator. None of these vulnerabilities really sort of sticks uh, terribly out. These are, well, maybe aside Photoshop, so not the most popular. It's not like your uh, PDF reader or anything super popular like this. Uh, so patch as you get around to it. For all of these vulnerabilities, Microsoft or the Adobe vulnerabilities, I wouldn't uh, sort of consider any of them like a patch now vulnerability, but something where you let your vulnerability management program run its course and hopefully in a couple of weeks or so you'll be patched. But uh, we do have uh, some more critical news from the larger Adobe ecosystem. Fishpick, a vendor creating extensions for the Adobe product Magento, in particular the WordPress integration for Magento, has been compromised. The attackers were able to inject malware into the Magento to work press integration that's uh, being uh, published uh, by Fishpick. Only uh, the uh, uh, paid version is actually affected uh, by this. The integration is quite popular. It has uh, over uh, 200,000 downloads. Of course, these are all the downloads, not just uh, the paid version. The compromise happened about a month ago. If you installed the paid Fishpick integration after August 19th, you may find that you inadvertently installed a Recobi backdoor on your system. 
Again, the free version was not affected. The initial code can be found in a file called license.php. Now, the presence of the file is normal, uh, but additional code was added uh, to this file that will then uh, download a backdoor uh, to the system. The name of the backdoor binary is lick.bin, so lic.bin. Again, sort of hinting uh, to uh, this being part of the licensing system. There's also a temp directory being created, slash temp.varnish, and then a number following the name Varnish. Varnish being a very popular caching system. So that, again, tries to fit in somewhat with this software. Additional indicators of compromise can be found in a blog post uh, by Sansec, uh, a security company that first found the backdoor and linked it to the fish pick compromise. So again, one of your classic supply chain attacks. You should also note that the backdoor does give the attackers a full remote access to your system. So there is a chance of follow-up activity that's not covered in the Sansec block. And Sansec itself has not seen any of that follow-up activity yet. But of course, this may be done more deliberately and manually to specific sites. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Have fun patching and talk to you again tomorrow.